today we're going to talk about machine learning and mapping. Actually, it would be a roller coaster ride trying to make you believe that mapping should be done by giving you examples of urban analysis, agriculture, and public spheres. We will throw in the words like computer vision, deep learning, remote sensing, MPI, just to confuse you. Bad joke, but like we will be together and we will be in journey together. So let me start with a small quiz. Do you know what's the population of Pakistan? About 210 million. How do you plan for 210 million people? How do you decide where to put the hospital? How do you decide which schools to build? How do you decide which electric grid should be upgraded? And to what capacity? Answer to these questions lie on reliable and up-to-date surveys, which are hard to get in economically challenged areas like Pakistan. Just imagine how much effort was being done to do the last census. How much time consuming was it? And how much laborious was it? About 90,000 enumerators went door to door, cities, villages, and towns in deserts, plains, and mountains of Pakistan to collect the information. But that was 2017. Can you plan 2020 vaccination drive on the base of information that is three years old? How you do that? That is where I come in. My area of research is computer vision and machine learning. Basically, I work to make algorithms smart enough to identify patterns and make decisions on the basis of that. We in our lab are using computer vision, deep learning, and remote sensing to answer the above questions using, well, using high computation, bringing high accuracy, and doing it in a fraction of a cost. Okay, so let me take you to start of the journey. We started with something very basic. Can we identify population centers of Punjab? So we designed a small convolution neural network and trained it to identify textures representing the building structures. These are the results on the right. So blue color indicates prediction. And you can see that it is able to identify the structures which are representing buildings from the aerial imagery or satellite imagery. Encouraged by this thing, we went on to run the algorithm on the area of Cholistan. And on the right, you can see the zoomed in, version, zoomed in instances of this, these results. We had the prediction and we combined them together to create neighborhoods. Then we correlated these neighborhoods towards the vaccination activity and school location information, trying to identify whether every area has a school or not, and vaccinators went to the all the areas which we recognize have population. And to our very pleasant surprise, it had a high correlation. This means that at least according to the government record, all the areas which had buildings in them had schools nearby too. Well, that's not encouraged us more, made us more bold. So we asked, can we do this for whole Punjab? We ran our algorithm, tweaked it, and then ran our algorithm to create most fine grain built up density map for whole Punjab. Uh, the results here show the results here show pooled up version till the urban unit level. Okay, uh, union council level, my apologies. Uh, here you can see that red color indicates the high density and the gray colors indicate low density of the build up areas. Well, what does this tell you? This tells you not only how the districts are growing, how the cities are growing, but at what pattern they are growing. So for example, in Lahore, you see a uniform growth from the center to the, to the, to the boundary areas. In Multan, you see centers of high build areas and then low build areas and same in Sialkot. What it tells you? It tells you that you can be expecting high property tax from the areas which have, have high build up ratios. It tells you that you can measure how much stress is on these in locations on the, on the basis of what is the build up area. So you can extract the information from free sources like OpenStreetMap and identify whether the, there's a high build up area, there are more schools there or not, there are more parks or not. There are more hospitals or not. So that answers part of a question we were asking in the start of our talk. Okay. Well, with all of these tools in our hand, we combined our efforts with the economics department, SDG Tech Lab, and UNDP, and tried to identify slums. Now, I want you guys to take a, a moment and think about the first word that comes into your brain when you think about the slums. What's the picture that gets you in, in, your, brain, in your imagination? 
it would be something with the houses with the tin roofs bad streets very bad life quality and now i want you guys to imagine have you seen tin roofs in lahore have you seen tin roofs in rawalpindi very few of them but don't we have slums we do have slums so what do we do instead of relying on our gut feelings and our biases what slums should look like we went on to say we were going to compute multi dimensionality poverty index mpi so mpi actually calculates poverty on the basis of deprivation of resources so but that means that we have to compute a lot of in lot of lot of uh, parameters that will go on to compute mpis and most of them can't be computed from satellite imagery so this means we will have to conduct the surveys so how machine learning can help well we can help them identify where they should be computing mpis where they should be going to survey the slums so we train a machine learning algorithm that can detect slums in different areas this is uh, not a complete list so this means our algorithm will make a lot of errors here you can see the result of temporary slum what we call temporary slum results and these are slums which are very close to our biases that they are tin roofs uh, very temporary buildings Uh, low quality life stuff like that however once we run our algorithm to lahore hyderabad and peshawar these kind of maps we'll get not all of these regions are slums so our teams go there they survey them they compute uh, they compute different different uh, different parameters that can be fed into to compute the mpis and that can help us understand what kind of depravity what kind of deprivation sorry exists in that location so how it is it helps us it's kind of a situation where snake is eating its tail we have a small amount of data set we train a machine learning algorithm that can detect slums but it was not correct so we have people going to their locations and compute more relevant information and now that relevant information would be fed again to the system to help us become less and less man power hungry and make algorithms which can which can run without uh, sorry which can run without the help of uh, humans we're still trying to characterize mpi we were still trying to characterize what kind of information we are re receiving from them however i can tell you this thing is that education is a priority in all of these areas we visited so we have been talk talking about the slums we have talking about economics one of the last just factor in pakistan's gdp is agro economy and pakistan loses a large bunch of our yield crop yield to the pests and crop diseases how can we help we like many of the solutions we can design a machine learning algorithm that takes a picture of a crop and tells you whether it's a pest or it has a crop disease or not what we do is that we add another layer that is a mapping we combine the information not from one evidence we combine the information from all the different farmers and create a spatial temporal map allowing us to do pattern recognition identify whether a crop which is right not not affected could be affected in coming weeks it's much more powerful than a single image okay till now we have talked about urban analysis we have talked about crops but mapping is something which is more personal if i can ask how many of you used cream or uber in last week how many of you use whatsapp and drop the pin on it and can i have a show of hand how many of you use google maps a lot of you so mapping is very personal mapping is something very close to us okay so we have two projects dealing with public spaces one of them is called tag pakistan it is an effort to capture biodiversity and natural beauty of pakistan what basically we do is that we take an image for example let's suppose you are you are having a picnic somewhere and you post one image okay and say having fun as a caption a machine learning algorithm will take this image and extract that there is a barbecue grill going around there okay it will extract that there is a river and there is a canoe so it will update the map making it more informative saying that this is a place where people can have canoe where people can have do barbecue where people can have picnic so now our map is becoming more informative more interesting more the information it will come the more relevant it will become 
and more up to date it will become. This is a snapshot of our result on northern area. So on your right, you can see the map where different icons have been dropped, indicating what kind of activities and information is available for those locations. This is done automatically by the machine learning, not waiting for you guys or anyone to tag it or put any information about this. And this is the same algorithm were run on only the birds, identifying the locations where these birds were seen, creating a biodiversity map for the birds. This could be done for any other any other animal. Now, the next one is a bit tricky one. It's called Jale. Memories. It's enough an effort to bring juice machine learning to have oral history recorded. And what is an oral history? I would say it's an oral and anecdotal history. So, might be your uncle has a very good story about Anarkali, about certain location of Anarkali Bazaar. How will you remember it? How will you note it down? We will use gamification and augmented reality to make it possible for you guys to share that information. You can put a note there, so that whenever your friend, other friend comes to this location, that note pops up and tells it that this very interesting story about this location, and you might want to visit it. We will give you images so that you can overlay and see that those images have more information about this location. They could be from your family, or they could be from a historical perspective. So in this case, you have a queen visiting Blasha Himself. A very interesting kind of information. Then on the side might be an old picture you took when in 1990s you went to went to some other some other place. So combining all of this, are we are reaching on the conclusion of this talk. And before we end, I want to say this thing. All the ideas you saw before and all the mistakes I made, they are not the product of single mind. Innovation borrows the seed in the soil of collaboration. Hell, the tree is raised in the tears of graduate students, but that's another story. I'm thankful to both of my graduate students, undergrad students, and my collaborators. Now, kind of a pseudo-philosophical point till I, in, in the end. We are living in the world which is run by algorithms and machines. This and these algorithms and machines work on the data that is contributed by the people who use them. Again, snake eating the tail. Algorithms train on data, they produce data points, and those data samples are used to train other algorithms. So if the data is biased, algorithms are going to be biased. And in many cases, these are biased because the data does not have variation coming from us. We are not doing our contribution. Well, that's not correct. Whenever you open a phone, whenever you post on Facebook, whenever you use Google Maps, you are consumer and producer of a data in an information technology world. However, that information technology, that information and data is not ours. It's not in public domain. It's a part of large corporate repository that is not easily accessible to people, to public scientists, to public policy makers, to social scientists, and machine learning people who are working in Pakistan. And if you look at this, if you Google right now, you will see the Wikipedia page is full of anecdotes of Game of Thrones, different actors, different people, stories, episodes, stuff like that. Try to search how many of you can find information about Chachaji of Pakistan. Very little. All of these projects are my way of collecting this information, allowing you to contribute. And here I have to, I have to make one kind of a apology that the way I present it is reversed. I took you from the source where you were not contributing anything and machine was doing everything. And slowly in the end, I have taken to you the project where you are the big contributor, Jade. The machine is doing very basic, very minimal. A lot of it is dependent upon you guys. You are contributing. And this is where I want to leave. If you can make a map of Pakistan, not just this and that, but the time and, the st and stories and one-liners and anecdotes, we would be writing a book that would be able to update itself and at the same time preserve what was there and we have lost it. Thank you very much, guys.